Med Salim Razai here, and in this series of videos, I'm going to be talking about management of IV and IO type complications or issues that may come up. So for part one, we're going to be talking about what happens if you're running a vasopressor through a peripheral IV and it extravasates. That's exactly what I have on here for you. I think it's important that if you're running peripheral vasopressors, you should have an extravasation protocol. And not, these steps that I have listed here are not a step one, step two, step three. These are all potential options that you can use. Now, the initial management would be obviously take the vasopressor, switch it to a different site so your patient doesn't continue to get hypotensive. Don't take the cannula out yet because you're going to try and suck out as much of the medication that has extravasated as possible. Now, least invasive to most invasive, the first thing you could do is you could do some 2% nitroglycerin ointment over the affected area. The nice thing about this is it causes vasodilation and may help if there is vasoconstriction in the area where the extravasation has occurred. Oftentimes, what I find is that I'm moving on to one of two options after that, and that's going to be either sub-Q and IV fentolamine, or it's going to be sub-Q terbutaline. So for the fentolamine, this is pretty straightforward. It typically comes in 5 milligrams per ml. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that 1 ml or 5 milligrams, you're going to mix that with 9 mls of saline, and then you can start giving that through the catheter at 0.1 to 0.2 milligrams per kilogram up to a max of 10 milligrams. You can also inject around the site, around the catheter itself subcutaneously. The key here is you want to minimize the amount of volume you're giving, and you want to use a needle that is going to be 25 gauge or smaller. If fentolamine is not an option, then sub-Q terbutaline might be. And for digital extravasation especially, you know, it's a tight space. We don't want to put a lot of volume in there. What I'm thinking is somebody who accidentally injects their finger with like an EpiPen or something like that. What you find is, is that terbutaline comes in one milligram per ml. And what you want to do is you want to take half that ml and you want to inject it around the digit where that would happen. Now, if it's not a digit and it's an extremity extravasation, the dosing it comes in is one milligram in 10 mLs. And you can inject that into the subcutaneous tissue around the catheter where extravasation has occurred. And you can repeat that dosing every 15 minutes. Now, again, not step by step, but these are all potential options. If you are working for an agency that is giving peripheral vasopressors, you should probably have a protocol in place so that if this happens, although super rare, you know how to treat it. There you have it. Thank you for listening. Let me know what questions you have.